question to answer because it can vary from institution to institution and from country to country. The World Health Organization won't make strict recommendations about if you're looking for genetic change A, you must use technique X. It says you need to be confident that your technique will detect that genetic change, but we're not telling you you have to use a specific technique. Now, the use of specific techniques to detect molecular changes or other changes in tissue is highly regulated in this country and in many other countries. And so it's not a random process, it's a careful process, but it may differ from institution to institution in terms of which tests are used and across different countries. But the bottom line is, for whatever technique is used by whatever institution, if they're looking to detect a molecular change, we've told them what that molecular change is, and the goal is for them to develop a analytically valid test to do that. In other words, they have to prove, based on these regulations, that their test actually detects that molecular change. Now, you may then ask, what if a hospital or a testing laboratory cannot do that? And the hope would be at that point that they would send that hospital that couldn't do it, or that laboratory that couldn't do it, would send the test out to a larger place that had the ability to do that test. The techniques that we employ uh, could have been used about five or maybe ten years ago. The difference now is that the field has progressed in terms of the knowledge about what these genetic changes mean, and therefore we felt it was ready to incorporate them. But it's more knowledge about what the lesions, what, what the abnormalities mean, rather than anything to do with massive technology development. In fact, if you look at the techniques that we're recommending as part of the 2016 WHO, relatively few of them are based on things like sequencing. Many of them are based on techniques that are routinely used in pathology laboratories. And in fact, before we made the recommendation to implement these, we and others in the field did surveys of what was available around the world. Patients will be getting a more specific diagnosis on their tumors if they are the kinds of tumors that we've incorporated the molecular parameters into classification. And as I say, there's some, but there are many, many tumors that will be classified the same <coughs> under 2016 versus 2007. But for those for which we've also included molecular now, patients will get a more precise diagnosis. The difference is that the diagnoses will come out in uh, tiers, in layers, but also in stages. So one thing patients are going to have to be aware of is if they have one of the tumors for which we do genetic analysis, molecular analysis, the diagnosis, the full diagnosis, may be delayed for a few weeks. They'll get the same diagnosis that they've always gotten within a week based on using the microscope, but the full diagnosis, what you refer to and what we call the integrated diagnosis, that will need to wait in some situations for a few weeks. So what will happen is there will be an initial diagnosis that comes out that has two or three of the full four layers, but the top layer, which is that integrated layer, will in some situations need to wait for a few weeks. So the good news is you are getting a more precise diagnosis. The bad news is that precise diagnosis, at least because of the technical challenges at the present time with doing these tests, requires a few more weeks. For most brain tumor patients, that shouldn't be a problem with treatment because most patients are waiting for their surgery sites to heal before they're going ahead with therapy. The types of tests that we do can be done on existing materials. 
So if a patient discusses that exact question with his or her physician and they together decide it would be important to go back and do the analysis, then we can go ahead and do that if sufficient tissue remains in their specimens. So we can do it retrospectively, but it's a question for individual patients and their oncologists to decide whether it needs to be, whether it should be done retrospectively. There's certain times where the importance of it may be more related to what happens on individual treatment and others where that may not be true. So I would say it's up to individual patients and their oncologists to do that.